and then his mother Maria, Mary, who that was her baby, and uh, she treated him the way most Puerto Ricans treat, you know, their only baby. So yeah. they were very, very night and day, very night and day. Did you ever meet either one of them? Oh, my grandma Mary, I knew really well. I didn't have the best relationship with her because she would always just talk shit about my mom. And I'm right. like, uh, this is the lady that's raising me. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you know I'm flying back there yeah. and I spend more time with her than you. Are you sure you want to go down this road? All right. You committed. Um, How old were you? She passed away? She passed away just a few years ago. And um, so you didn't get to ask her as many questions as you would like. I did, but he was taken away in such a horrific manner that she was never equipped to deal with that. What like, do you mean? What do you mean? Any question I ask about my father, oh, Freddie, your father, he is so perfect. He never did anything wrong. Not a single problem, never. He never did anything bad. Always listen. Right. And I'm sitting there like, yo, I've heard so much shit from all his cousins. But she couldn't wrap her She couldn't go there. And I understood that. Totally. So I never blamed her for that. The mom stuff was what I always kind of held right. against her. Like, She's a really cool chick. Yeah. And... You talk a lot of shit. She doesn't. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out who's good and who's bad here. <laughs> I figured it out. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I couldn't get any truth from her. Couldn't get any truth from my papa, who I loved very, very much. But he couldn't deal with it either. He was my grandmother's brother. Right. His name was William Ramirez. And that's what I used to write scripts under. Because if it was Freddie Prinze, execs would be like, fucking that'll suck. And then they read William. And they're like, whoa, this is really good. And then I go, ha ha. <laughs> and he passed away also? He, he passed away. He was a butcher in San Juan. He was badass. And then my uncle, Ron de Blasio, who wasn't blood, but he was my father's manager. He was Richard Pryor's manager. Right. He's Fluffy's manager right now. He's George Lopez's manager. A lot of musicians and shit. He was the first cat to ever really sort of break it down for me and give me some honesty and some truth um, and answer the hard questions that I know he didn't want to answer. Right. But no one else in my family could step up at that time. They were all going through their own stuff, man. It, it's really. And he, he put it on his shoulders. He walked me around the block where he lived, still lives. And we stopped in front of Marilyn Monroe's house. And uh, he sort of compared my father to her in a lot of ways in about getting to a business before you know yourself in this business. And if you don't, then this business will define you. And if it does, that's a lie you have to live forever. Or if you try to break out of it, you're almost punished for it, right? Like my dad hated being on Chico and the Man. He yeah. hated it. Chico meant boy. And Richard Pryor would call him every night and be like, you don't let them call you boy? Do you understand how disrespectful? And Richard was the one who discovered my dad. Like right. he was my dad's hero. Even though they had beef because of Pam Greer, because Pam picked my dad instead of Richard, he still... It killed him that Richard didn't respect him. It killed him that Richard would give him all this heat for this, right? But my dad didn't know how to say no. It was just yes, yes, yes. He was working five days a week on Chico. But also, man, I know that Chico means boy, but the opportunity for Latinos to see somebody. He got hated on by the Latinos. Yeah. So he couldn't get love there because Mexicans were like, fuck you, you're Puerto Rican. It's right. like, yo, white people think we're all the same, man. You got to send love to right. like, anybody speaking Spanish. You need to love. But he was working five days on Chico. That night he was doing all the local clubs. Right. And then on the weekends he had the Vegas gig or he had to go here. He had to go there. It was seven days a week, every single day for two years straight. And it was just ripping him up, man. Just ripping him up. And he was just a baby, man. Yeah. He was 20. It's so weird to call my dad a baby. But, but I'm double his age. That's the crazy thing, right? You look at what people are. That's why I like, like um, it's interesting for me to watch guys like Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber could have ended up. Like Cobain, like your dad, like like you I, you watch kids like that and you're like, oh, they're going down a tough path. They're you're not. Some meant people think he still is, by the way. Yeah, but you're not mentally prepared no. or equipped. Well, he wasn't mentally prepared for the level of fame that hit him. I mean, yeah. we've all seen Bieber yeah. make those kid mistakes, and if you were a thing. regular kid, it'd be like, hey, man, you got to learn from this. But if you can but break out he's of famous, it, it, there's nobody there to put anybody like that in check. So you're ultimately. You're making decisions uh, as a teenager or as a 20-something-year-old, and I'm, I can only speak for men, where we're dumb as shit, where you go, hey, is this a good idea? And you're, there's nobody there to say, hey, that's a really fucking 
bad idea. Dude, Vince McMahon in the WWE is a victim of that, and he's in his 70s. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a great idea. Oh, yeah, 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 that's great. And then I, I'd be the one guy in the back like, that. hey, man, that sounds real shitty. Yeah. And he'd be like, what? And I'd be like, well, here's what, let me pitch what you just pitched to you. You tell me. Yeah. And then I would kind of like break it down. But you have to have someone like that. My old man didn't have anybody no. like that. And, but, and they were uh, seeing his talent as a huge opportunity to make money. Not in a bad, gross way, although I'm sure there were some people in that circle. But there were also other people that just thought he could handle it because he, was, he wasn't very honest with people. He was very, even with like Jay Leno, who was his closest friend, Jay's told me before, he's like, there were nights where I literally felt like I never even knew him. He was just like, I would talk to him. We, they were roommates out here in L.A. trying to make it when they were both broke. Yeah. And, uh, and he's like, I would, he would come home and I just wouldn't even know who he was. Because he, he didn't know who he was. He had no idea. And this business defined him. Yeah. Um, but they, they, it's a tricky thing. I've yeah. seen it happen a million times. And you, you know, you're in the, comic, in the comedy world, so you know it. Like, once you're tagged as something, yeah. that's who you are. Hey, look at somebody like... I'll, if you just if you get famous being a character, say Jim Varney. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Take, explain because not everybody knows who Jim Varney. Is. Jim Varney is a he he played a character Ernest, and you know Ernest hit, and so everybody wanted Jim Varney to be Ernest, and guess what? That's it for the rest of your life. Yeah, man. Hey, look at and by the third one, everyone's like, dude, Ernest sucks. And then if you're like, okay, well, let me try something else. No, you're Ernest. It's how, like, how about bro? this? How about this? Like, um, uh, the I, I would tell you the a a more up to date, too up to date, like like a people that fit into that, like flow from Progressive. Yeah. All right. Now she's yeah. made a great career, but she was a grounding actress. You yeah. Ask, you I ask, remember you this. You ask Fortune Feimster. She was like, she was fucking funny. She can't do anything else but be flow from progressive. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Uh, the, look, fucking Harry Potter has. He's. he's they're trying. They're efforts. trying. But he, I think, has a shot. I'm, like, here's why. He's here's trying, why. but he but hasn't. Hold on. Here's why. Fast forward to when he's in his 40s. Yes. Okay. And that's when it's going to, because right agree. now, like, he's on a show on TBS that's this weird, dark comedy called The Dark Ages with Steve Buscemi. And he's making the kind of choices that are so far removed that by the time he's 40, people will allow that. I agree. Have, if he doesn't make those moves, then when he's 40, they're still like, yo, the dude from Harry Potter. Totally agree. I totally agree. He's, he is distancing himself enough. To where I think he'll make it out. I hope so. Like depending on how old you are, I'm something to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if if you're really young, then I'm Kanan and I get to be a Jedi. If you're two generations older than that, then I'm Fred Jones and you legit don't know me from other stuff. Yeah. If you're two generations above that, then it's she's all that and those. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like people know you when when you do movies and things for a specific Who's thing. Who's Fred Jones? The Scooby guy. Oh, I never knew he had a last name. Yeah, bro. <laughs> there you go. That's an educational podcast. That Fred Jones was a rapper. Fred Jones. Better, yo, no, that's a uh, Mike Jones. Mike Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Jones. Uh, by the way, I was driving in and I saw a billboard. Say thank you, everybody. By the way, I love this combo. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'll be in Philly soon. Jay Comedian Josh Wolf dot com. He ain't scared of no virus, Christopher Boyd. Yeah, man. Um, I saw a billboard coming in that looked like a LeBron James billboard. Yeah. And it was like a gold and purple jersey. But the guy kind of had like longer hair. I was like, what? And it said LeVon James. And it was a rap album poster. Come on. And his back was to you. I was like, I don't know if he's good, or middle or trash. Yeah. But... That'll at least get him a few. There was a rapper a while ago. His name was Kirko Bangs. Yeah. But it was Kirko <laughs> Bangs, right? And I know a bunch of people bought that song just to, it yeah. was like, drank in my cup. It was not, it was more like a club song, not like a song that's going to last, right? I'm going to go by But the, he sold some records just off the name recognition. And I think they did the same thing with this guy. I think I'm going to go by the name uh, Cycle Jordan. Nice. And I'm going to be, I'm going to just enter a lot of bicycle races. I'm going to be Freddie Murphy and I'm going to sell out comedy <laughs> clubs and you're going to be so jealous. I'm going to be Cycle Jordan. You're going to be like, yo, who's this Freddie Murphy motherfucker? Cycle Jordan is going to take <laughs> over the bicycling world. Yeah, yeah, motherfucker, I'm Cycle Jordan. Cycle Jordan. 
Well, Freddie Murphy will hey. own. Freddie Murphy will out earn Cycle Jordan any day of the, any night of the week. Whoever is listening and knows how to draw things or to do graphic art, make a Freddie.